Let's talk about Alzheimer's. There's some recent information that I want to share with you that debunks this idea of amyloid placking causing Alzheimer's. There was a whistleblower, uh, Professor Matthew Schrag, MD, PhD, who did a deep dive and analysis on a foundational research study that was done in 2006, linking that amyloid placking in your brain to Alzheimer's, okay? Now you have to realize that all the funding and the studies after that was based on this, this study. And if I'm not mistaken, they actually injected this amyloid placking into the brains of animals and then they, they got dementia. So that was a study that a lot of research were looking for to be able to continue their research because so many studies at the time um, did not show positive improvement when they tried to lower placking or trying to block placking in the brain. So in other words, this theory of plaque causing Alzheimer's just never took off. It never showed results. And very unfortunately, a lot of people are depending on research to come up with an answer, a cure, a solution for a long time. And basically for decades, they've been focusing on the wrong target. A similar thing happened with this cholesterol, you know, being the bad guy. This hyper-focus on cholesterol is the root of your heart problems has been going on since the 50s, all based on some research in the 50s, where they selectively omitted certain information out of that study, which gave you the different conclusion that cholesterol was bad. And of course, it also happened with this theory of depression being a chemical imbalance. They recently found that there's no evidence showing that people who are depressed have a chemical imbalance, the very foundation that all these drugs are based on. Now, before I get into what I believe is causing this problem, let's first talk about the early symptoms of Alzheimer's. You have a problem remembering recent events, okay? You also have a problem trying to find words. You have an issue with spatial location. Trying to navigate through town without a GPS is very difficult. And this relates to a part of the brain called the hippocampus, which is um, all about uh, trying to locate yourself in, in space. And that's the first thing that happens with Alzheimer's. The hippocampus starts to shrink. You also tend to get a loss of smell and also mood swings. So to figure this problem out, we have to first look at what we truly know. Okay. Um, well, we do know in Alzheimer's that the brain does shrink and it starts off with the hippocampus. We also know that people who are getting Alzheimer's are getting younger and younger. People who are 45 years old, even people in their 30s and even 20s are getting Alzheimer's, which is insane. They also have found a high correlation between hyperinsulinemia, high insulin and insulin resistance and Alzheimer's. And like I said before, they found that treating amyloid placking just doesn't produce results. It's not fruitful. And they also talk about a risk factor involving APOE, which I'm not going to get into in this video, but all you really need to know is that this is related to LDL, which by the way, is increased with this right here, hyperinsulinemia. And I'm going to touch a little more on this in a bit. But what I did is I started looking at alternative theories to Alzheimer's, okay? And I looked through a lot of data and I spent a lot of time with dead ends until I found an alternative theory that just makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of additional information that aligns with this theory. And this alternative theory is based on that Alzheimer's is a lysosome storage problem. Now, what is a lysosome storage problem? It's a little um, factory in the cell that helps you recycle and clean up garbage. So you have these lysosomes in your cells, you have them in your neurons. So apparently the garbage disposal recycler mechanism is broken. I mean, if you had no way of getting rid of your trash in your house and it started building up, it would eventually leave your house unlivable, okay? Because of the garbage, the toxicity. Well, that's exactly what's happening with Alzheimer's. So in this little lysosome, which is the garbage disposal recycler in your cells, you have the old damaged stuff, garbage, protein, damaged proteins, 
goes through this little mechanism. There's over 50 enzymes and acids that are dissolving and breaking things down, okay? And it spits out on the other side, these renewed building blocks. So your body can be very efficient and build new cells. This whole process is called autophagy. So autophagy is a condition in your body where you're recycling things. So now the question is, is there any data that backs this theory up? And the answer is yes. Um, it just so happens there's a very common mutation with a gene, a PSEN1, which if there's a problem, a mutation with that gene, you're going to have a big problem getting rid of the junk out of your cells, okay? And apparently the mutation of this gene has for a long time been known to cause Alzheimer's. So that aligns with this theory as well. There's also a patent that I found, which I'm going to put all this stuff down below, which involves enhancing the function of your lysosomes, okay? There are certain drugs that can be used to help improve or enhance this function of the lysosome. And so these are the two drugs right here. And this one decreases neurodegeneration. And this drug right here enhances neurogenesis. They're rebuilding the creation of new neurons. Now, there, are there any studies that link autophagy to Alzheimer's? And yes, there is. There's quite a few. In fact, in these studies, it shows that Alzheimer's is a problem with autophagy. And then the question is, what would trigger autophagy? Well, this is where I'm going to go right now. But you have to realize that the most potent thing to trigger autophagy is fasting. And there's a tremendous amount of research showing that fasting improves Alzheimer's, okay? So a lot of these factors align with this theory. So to date, I think this right here is the most likely real cause of Alzheimer's. All right, so next question is, of course, for those people that don't like to take drugs because they're side effects, are there any natural versions of these drugs that could potentially enhance the lysosome? Well, yes, there are a lot of things you can do to enhance the lysosome function as well as autophagy. And the first thing you should know is what will induce autophagy is the lowering of glucose. That's a very potent trigger. So what does this lower glucose thing mean? It means low carb, no sugar, okay? So the ketogenic diet, that would be number one. Number two, fasting, I already mentioned this. If I personally had Alzheimer's, okay, or, or my wife had Alzheimer's, I would get them, well, she's already on intermittent fasting, but I would get them on OMAD, one meal a day, and every single week, I would do a 48-hour fast. Well, you might be saying, well, what if the person's too thin? You know, that's going to be a problem. Listen, I would much rather have someone too thin or myself be too thin than get Alzheimer's. My mother-in-law had Alzheimer's, and I went to the assisted living home where she was, and it was devastating to see all these people with Alzheimer's and their spouses coming to visit them, sitting with them, trying to communicate with them. In fact, that's probably one of the most devastating things that can happen to a loved one, um, Alzheimer's, because you basically lose your ability to think, communicate, and this is tragic. And of course, when I was there and I was watching what they were feeding them, it was snacks between meals. It was pure carbohydrates. All right, number three, I looked up and I found some fascinating research on how you can use certain herbs that have effects that enhance the lysosome as well as increasing autophagy. And the number one thing that I found is curcumin that comes from turmeric. Amazing properties, not just for um, improving your cognitive function. I mean, it's, it's good for a lot of things, but it specifically improves and enhances the lysosome, which is fascinating. Number two, pine bark, specifically pycnogenol in pine bark has certain properties that can help enhance the lysosome. We also have the herb thunder god vine and green tea extract, okay? Specifically EGCG has significant effects of increasing autophagy. Omega-3 fatty acids, specifically DHA, has great effects increasing autophagy. I also found data on small chain fatty acids increase autophagy as well. And you get small chain fatty acids from your microbes. Your microbes make these fatty acids from the fiber you eat. And I'm talking about like salads, so that fiber hits the microbiome, and then they make these small chain fatty acids, which 
are very similar in chemistry to ketones. So going on the ketogenic diet, reducing glucose, and also increasing these right here, increasing ketosis is the beneficial thing. Exercise is also another significant um, inducer of autophagy. So we want to include that. And then we have sleep, cruciferous vegetables, certain phytonutrients in extra virgin olive oil. Make sure you get the real stuff. And lastly, heat and cold therapy. So in summary, Alzheimer's is not about getting rid of plaque. It's about getting rid of the garbage that accumulates in the lysosome. And you do that by enhancing autophagy. And there's one thing applying all this to a loved one or a friend that you know, but it's another thing to start applying this information right away for yourself and your friends and family to prevent Alzheimer's. And for those of you that want to learn how to do fasting, I put this video up right here. Check it out.